Hello guys, I'm back outside with something is off. No, oh, nope, nope, nope. There we go. Hello guys, we're back outside and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the first lens I got with my Panasonic Lumix S5. It's in focus. Yes, this is the Lumix S 20 to 60 millimeter F 3.5 to 5.6 kit lens. Let's go. So this 20 to 60 kit lens was the first lens I had with the Lumix S5 after which I bought the 85mm f1.8 and the Sigma 24mm f2 which is recording this video. So this lens basically built my whole Lumix content base most of the videos recorded on this channel exclusively with this kit lens right here i was a bit skeptical at first about using a kit lens because when i just started with my nikon d3500 all i have were my kit lens the 18 to 55 something like that and the 70 to 300 something like that and they weren't the best lens for capturing premium looking content but they got the job done so back then when i just got the s5 my first full frame mirrorless camera majority of my content well not majority all of my content were captured using this kit lens right here both photography video work everything i've shot like five music videos using only this lens right here crazy right but it got the job done a lot of persons may bash a kit lens oh it's too basic or oh, the aperture don't open wide enough or oh, this that it's not sharp enough blah 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 but if you know how to use your equipment properly and utilize your equipment to the best of your ability you can get a lot done with just a kit lens one of the perks of shooting on a kit lens like this is the fact that you have that 20 millimeter which is very wide and can cover a lot of stuff. You can use that for landscape, talking headshots, vlogging that is very wide for vlogging. And then you have up to the 60 millimeter focal length where you can use that for your portraits closer tight shots if you want to stand at a point and zoom in you have that capability so right there you have all the focal lengths between 20 all the way up to 60. given that you will sacrifice having a wide aperture with the variable aperture that comes with a kit lens that's the trade-off so it's getting pretty dark and noisy outside where i'm at now so i'm gonna go inside to the studio to finish up this video but in the meantime enjoy these shots i captured using the 20 to 60 millimeter kit lens enjoy <laughs> We're now inside guys and here I have the 20 to 60 millimeter kit lens from Panasonic in comparison to the 85 millimeter f1.8 prime and they look almost identical. Let me take the lens hood off. So here we are. Now this is another one of the reasons why I like these lenses Panasonic have been making. The 18 millimeter, 20 millimeter, 24 millimeter, 34 millimeter, 50 millimeter, 85 millimeter are all the same size. They look exactly like the 20 to 60 millimeter kit lens. And bear in mind, this is a kit lens and they manage to fit it into this form factor. Look how close it looks to the 85 millimeter prime. Look at that. The only difference is the zoom ring right here and the big focus ring on the 85 millimeter prime but look at them so coming in the box when you get the 20 to 60 millimeter kit lens you get the lens hood of course you know that's a given you get the lens cap 
Oh, that's a given as well. But you also get this little cord here, this little thing for the lens cap on the 20 to 60. After buying my other Lumix lens, I don't seem to get that little cord on my lens cap. I only got it for the 20 to 60 millimeter kit lens. So I have the basic specs right here from DP review. So we have the Lumix S 20 to 60 millimeter zoom lens, of course. It has no image stabilization, but I don't really care because the IBIS on the Lumix S camera bodies are insane. They are so good, I hardly use my gimbal. Most of the content I produce are handheld, especially on this channel. Also, it has a maximum aperture of f3.5. When you zoom up to 60, it goes to 5.6. The minimum aperture is 22, which is pretty standard. It has a minimum focus distance of 0.15 meters or 5.91 inches if you're in the US. A maximum magnification of 0.43, a weight of 350 grams, 0.77 pounds if you're in the US, a length of 87 millimeters, 3.43 inches if you're in the US, and those are the specs right off the bat of the Lumix 20 to 60 millimeter kit lens. I am not going to get into any deep details by doing a review of showing the sharpness around the edges, the chromatic abrasion compared to a $3,000 lens, the color science within this lens. You know, something you would get on a Gerald and Dunn video because, I mean, a person who is looking to buy a kit lens won't care about those stuff within a lens. If you're going to care about sharpness around the edge of a lens, you're sure not going to be spending $600 to get a kit lens. You're gonna be getting a prime or a cinematic lens. So right off the bat, I think Panasonic did a superb job with pairing this lens with their S body of cameras as the kit lens because trust me, this is the do it all lens and I am not exaggerating, I am not being biased, but yeah, this is the do it all lens. When I just got my S5 camera, I couldn't afford a prime lens right off the bat. So this did all of my video and photography work. I did a ton of event coverage on this lens, shot music videos, did portrait shoots, just using this lens. Um, what I love about it personally, the build quality is pretty solid. It's very lightweight, it's not a heavy lens because I have a Sigma 24 millimeter F2 prime lens, which is shooting this video right now. And it is, I think it's almost as heavy as this and it's a prime lens, but that lens is fully metal. I think this is magnesium alloy with plastic. So it cuts down on the weight and it is also weather sealed, robust and shock resistant. I don't know if it's shock resistant, but I've dropped it and nothing happened. So yeah, and it's just great using this little lens to get so much done. You have the manual to automatic switch right here on the lens, even though you have it on the Lumix camera. It's just good to have so much in this little tiny lens. Chromatic abrasion when you're recording is minimum. You don't see a lot unless you go all the way up to the edges, which is pixel peeping, I don't think anyone would be zooming up all the way from a kit lens. Um, ghosting, very minimal, you know you won't get rid of ghosting and solar flares, they will be there in lens of this price point. I tend to use the wider spectrum of this lens when I'm capturing content, so I will always be at around 20, 24, 35 millimeter, maybe go up to 50, 60 if I'm trying to get some portrait or tight shots. So this lens lean a little more to the wider side of the spectrum instead of the telephoto side of the spectrum. And this is good for landscape photography, architectural photography, street photography. I don't think this would be an ideal lens for sport because it doesn't go as far out as you would have on like the 24 to 105, the 70 to 200 or 70 to 300 lenses. So this wouldn't be an ideal lens for sport photography unless you're right there up in the action and don't have to zoom in too far to reach whatever is taking place. Now, as it relates to sharpness, this lens is pretty sharp. It's as sharp as all the lens 
I've got. I don't really pixel peep or zoom up into my photos to see, oh, this is not so sharp. This is not as sharp as that. No, no, I don't do that. As long as my subjects are in focus, I like to soften my images because I use mist filters. So every lens nowadays over $500 are sharp. So I don't think sharpness is an issue. It's not like some of the lenses that are sharp in the center and then the more you go to the edge of the frame, it starts to, you know, soften up. No, this is, this, this lens maintains sharpness throughout from the center to the edge. The edge might be a little softer than the center, but it's still sharp. And the autofocus works absolutely well on this 20 to 60 millimeter kit lens. It works better than this 24 millimeter prime from Sigma I am using on the Lumix S5. This lens I have on the camera, it is very slow with the autofocus, I don't know why. I normally throw it in manual and focus myself, but with this lens, I have more trust in the autofocus with this lens than I do with this one on the camera. So autofocus, I guess it works better on Lumix lens than other brands. And the focus motor on this, it, it is so silent. I, since using Panasonic cameras, I don't think focus motors exist. I don't hear them, they're so silent. Like when I had my Nikon, I could hear the focus saying, neep, neep, neep. With my Panasonic Lumix lenses, even though they're newer, duh, they're gonna be more quiet compared to the Nikon and old EF lenses. These are very quiet. I don't hear the motors at all. And I am not exaggerating. They're so smooth and quiet. I could put it to my ear, focus, and don't hear a thing. Kudos to Panasonic for whatever they're doing. Now currently, if you want to buy this lens online, you can get it from anywhere between $500 to $600. I know for a fact it's currently on Amazon for $600. You can get it pre-owned on eBay, Marketplace for a lower price. It's not an expensive lens. It's a very affordable lens. It's, one, it's in the average price bracket of lenses. Now before I continue my ranting, I'm going to show you guys some samples I got from this right over here, my little 20 to 60, so you guys can see the images coming from this lens. I'm going to be showing both photos and video samples. Enjoy! Now, is this lens for you? It depends on where you are as a photographer or a video creator. If you're just starting out getting your first full frame camera from Panasonic or any L mount system and you want a lens that can get a lot done without breaking the bank or having to have multiple lenses, this would be perfect. If you're an intermediate photographer or video creator upgrading from say a crop sensor, a micro four third, APS-C and you want to get your first full frame, but you can't afford a lot of lens, this would be perfect. If you're an advanced photographer or video creator and you have a full frame camera already and you want to add some more lenses to your arsenal, this wouldn't be so ideal to you because since I've started accumulating more lenses, I found myself using the 20 to 60 less and less as I go along. I start planning my shoots more and using dedicated prime lenses 
things depending on the situation. But if I'm capturing content in a pinch, I'm gonna pull for this. If I'm vlogging, I'm gonna pull for this. If I want to shoot landscape architecture, this is currently the widest lens I've got, 20 millimeter, I'm gonna pull for it. So it all depends on your workflow and where you are as a photographer or video creator. If you found this video interesting, hit that like button and that subscribe button so I can continue making more content on Panasonic Lumix products or photography and video making skills and practices within my YouTube channel. I'm Siobhan Beckford. Please hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more videos like these and I am signing out. Peace. Mercy. My heart is filled with love. My heart is filled with love. My heart is filled with love. My heart is filled.